Hey guys, Dion here. Welcome to my garage. I got new lighting here so you guys can see better because usually when I'm recording in here, it's a little bit dark. Um, I do have other lights in here and as you can see, the Miata is still a work in progress. I got the subframe all removed. I'll do that this weekend. But uh, for today, we're actually taking my Cayman, which rarely comes out of this garage because I'm always working on the Miata. Um, as you can see right here, that's the subframe for the Miata, just literally chilling right here, ready to go. But Anyways, we're gonna take this to Jay Leno's garage today for the finale of the Hot Wheels Legends Tour. Now, uh, Snoop Dogg's gonna be there, Fluffy's gonna be there, uh, Hot Wheels Judge is gonna be there, and it's gonna be crazy because I don't, I don't think anyone can just waltz into uh, Jay Leno's garage. It's pretty crazy. We're fortunate enough to be invited by Hot Wheels, thank you. Um, and I'm pretty excited because I grew up watching Jay's garage and, um, you know, Everyone's seen as crazy collections of cars and my collections, just one, two, and like two other ones on the outside. But you know what I'm saying? It's just like my, my Cayman's probably gonna be the cheapest car over there. So I'm pretty excited. Uh, I got Victor at Emergency Hookers towing this car today because if you guys didn't know, I live in OC. And if you've ever driven to Burbank, California, where Jay's garage is, dude, the freaking roads, Horrible. There'd be like a big dip and then there could be like a big mound that, you know, just jacks up your oil pan. So I'm not taking that chance. Now I have driven this to uh, LA before, downtown LA for Super Ill with Super Street. And that was the sketchiest freaking thing I have ever done, ever done. Now, can I drive this to Burbank if, if I wanted to? I could, yeah, but I'd probably end up losing like pieces of my, my splitter and my diffuser, trust me. I've already driven to that area before and it's not fun. So rather than force it, we're just gonna tow it and you know, people are gonna hate. They're just gonna say you never drive your car, whatever. You know, if it's your car and you spent this much money on it and you're, you know, you, someone tells you that just drive it and if you break it, you break it, no way you wouldn't do it. So I'm not gonna do that. But anyways, today I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of this build, all right? Before I take it out of the garage, we're just gonna talk about uh, what this car is and uh, yeah, and how I started with it. So uh, let's get to that. So I got my phone here because I, I really don't know the amount of stuff that I have on this car. And after a while, after five years of building a car, you'll probably forget what you installed on the car unless it's like something huge like a body kit. So uh, to start off with, my swan neck. This is a fully custom swan neck setup that I designed together with Drew Dayton and uh, it was machined by my friend Charleston Ong at ASR Parts. And dude, it's, it's insane. The amount of work this took to build is insane, insane. First, I started off with a cardboard drawing, all right? And then I, uh, I got it laser cut out of steel and then after the steel, we we installed it obviously to see how it looks. And then we did the billet version. Um, up, aside from what you see here, there's an actual bridge inside that's pretty interesting that you won't see in most setups. So uh, yeah, this is probably one of those cool pieces that I will remember. Next, the side extensions. These boys right here, I call them my side extensions. Essentially this flat belly piece right here uh, that extends from the middle out to the side skirts. And then I added this vertical swoop, kind of like my air diverter. And then over here has got a secondary plate, another plate, and then I got a canard back here that you can't really see, but I'll, I'll show you that later. Next, the, uh, the canards. So up here in the front, I'm very big with, with aero stuff and I do a lot of this stuff at the house. So I got my front canards and I obviously got my little secondary one right here with the side extension, my three piece front splitter with the, uh, the side being removable because most of the time when you go down a driveway, the corner of the splitter is what you're gonna jack up. All right, so I made this piece to be uh, easily replaceable. You just, you just jack this up and you take it out and uh, build another one. All right, next, the the full diffuser, actually. So uh, if you go to the back here again, we have my full diffuser setup. So this took me 
a, a month to design. It's very simple, really, because it's just a flat sheet of uh, alum panel. Now, I know you're gonna ask, what material do I use? It's called alum panel. Google it. So A-L-U-M-P-A-N-E-L, -E alum panel. And uh, it's just a flat sheet. Essentially, this is just copying the 911 RSR design because there's really no way to do anything else. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of cars like my, my Miata back here, I cut the bumper all the way up here and I swung the, the diffuser all the way up with a, you know, I think it's like a 14 degree max angle. And um, you can't really do that with the Cayman because the exhaust is back here, the transmission's over here, and there's a lot of things that, that's just blocking you from doing that. So the only way to do it is just this flat sheet and that's how Porsche does it. I added this, uh, this canard setup right here and then same with this three piece design. I added the side here for, uh, you know, if, if it touches the ground, I can just remove it easily. All right, and then the side plates are also uh, alum panel, same thing. All right, next, let me turn on my light because it died. All right, so next piece, Sp Spider Auto headlights. Now people ask me what kind of headlights these are. Spider Auto headlights, all right? And then Spider Auto taillights. We're not gonna go back there because I just walked over there. And then um, the, the windows that you see here, all of my windows, they're all polycarbonate. So meaning they're basically like plastic, like Lexon, but a little bit different. Polycarbonate's what like planes use, like the, uh, the little Cessnas. And I'm not sure if like the big, you know, big commercial jets use um, polycarbonate, but uh, that's what this is. The front, the side, I don't know what this little window is. It, it's just a, the quarter window, you just call it the quarter window. Then the back also. So. Um, I can't unfortunately roll this thing down because uh, the slider is over here. So it is, it is what it is, but you lose a lot of weight this way. All right. And then the, after the window, the fender vents, check this out. So the fender vents on this car, essentially just like the Miata that I did that I, I think I, yep, already dropped the video. So if you, uh, if you've kept up with my channel, you've seen that I, I actually designed a fender vent for that car and uh, essentially the same thing here i we scanned this all right and then we designed the fender vent cut this hole out and then we bolted the uh, fender flare or the fender flares the fender vents right on there so they do work they do extract heat there's holes there it doesn't it's not just a a window cover like the uh like the mustang louvers that they put on the quarter windows all right so what else i gotta oh i got a car tech battery isolator. So this right here, this switch will cut off power throughout the whole car. So if something happens, something burns, uh, you, you get into an accident at the track or whatever, if something happens, you get a short, you could kill the power from just hitting that. That's a CarTech battery isolator. Not cheap, but they're awesome. Uh, same things that, that real race cars use, you know, like I forgot, uh, like 350 bucks or something. But they're awesome because they're solid state, they're tiny, they don't take up too much space. All right, next, uh, stuff that you can't really see. Yeah, you can't really see this, but I got a Zoom Engineering Carbon Fiber Rear View Mirror. Pretty awesome. Uh, Renline Floor Mats. So if you come all the way over here, I can open the door and then check this out. Voila! Those are the Renline floor mats. All right, because we're doing interior stuff right now, so we're just gonna stay over here. Let me let me get one of these lights because it's gonna be dark. Oh, yeah. All right. So if you go over here, you can see that that uh, mirror that I was talking about earlier, the rear view mirror. Uh, you can't see that it's carbon, but it's there. Uh, P1300 GT seats from Recaro. Freaking awesome. I love these seats. The seat belts I got. Uh, Shroth, then I got my Momo Motorsport uh, steering wheel, I forgot, that's a Monte Carlo. And then I got the Works Bell flip-ups. So if you're not familiar with the flip-ups, they're freaking awesome. Let me see if I could get this flippy. Voila! See that, they flip up. And they flip up because you, you can just slide right in. Because, you know, if you have big legs or whatever, 
you can just scooch right in without popping it off. Now, the Miata's got a quick release. You could also take it off. It really depends on what you like. This thing is just beeping. And then I got my CAE shifter. See that? Ooh, so good. CAE shifter. Yeah, this car is still a six speed. It's not uh, sequential or anything. I got the, uh, you won't be able to see this, but the roof is done in suede, black suede. And uh, that's pretty much it. I got the, the stuff right here from Renline, the floor mats Renline, the pedal sets Renline. I got carbon fiber trinkets inside here. But other than that, it's it's pretty it's pretty clean and simple uh, from back there you can see the GMG cage I'm not sure if you can see the the greenness but if you come around over here you should be able to see the uh, the whole interior setup right there see all the greenness and whatnot so that's a cage from GMG that black bottle that you see there that's my fire suppression bottle also known as a fire extinguisher so I'm gonna flip this back down. We're done with the interior. The interior is super, super, super simple. I, I don't really care to do a lot of gaudy interior pieces. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, the stuff that you can't see, well, other than the back here, I guess, there's a, the Moton canisters up here. You guys might be curious, like what the Moton canisters are. It's the same thing as my Miata. The, the cans here are kind of like an extension for your, uh, for your coilover. So more, more fluid, more capacity for cooling your oil when you're, you know, really hitting those canyons or the track. Um, the coilover setup on this car is a Moton three-way. So badass. Moton will make you any coilover you want. The length of the, the, the body, the, the diameter, the, the, you know, like the diameter of the shaft, the, the valving, the spring, ah, dude, you, you tell them, they'll make it. And it's not cheap, but it's it's awesome because uh, if you're gonna build a car like this, you really don't wanna cut corners. Uh, the suspension setup here is all Terret engineering. So I'm using a lot of their GT3 stuff. So if you go to Terret engineering, you look at their control arms, their their tie rods, their sway bars, their, it, dude, it's insane. It's insane. The amount of stuff that they offer for these cars, you, you literally like build a Lego because you just take everything off and you swap it in. And by the time you're done, dude, you're like 15 G's into suspension parts. And um, I'll add the, the parts list in the description below, but dude, I don't even wanna count how much I spent on the suspension because it's insane, but it is so worth it because you could, you could literally manipulate your wheel in any direction that you want with these pieces, which is why I went with it because um, you know, with this wide body setup, the wheel setup that I'm using, I needed to move caster, toe, camber to fit the, the body properly. So a lot of the suspension stuff we can't personally see because we need to put this thing up on jacks. Um, but I'll see if I can find clips to kind of, you know, add to see, you know, see if you guys could point them out. Uh, wheels here from Work, Work Wheel Japan. I'm real good friends with those guys. Uh, JC over there and Dans le même sens Hey guys, JC from Work Wheel. So we took, took you around like Osaka tonight. Um, and we ended up in Tenoji. That's a very old, uh, old, uh, old style Osaka. So yeah, basically we just brought the car down here and there's no one, it's like three in the morning. So, you know, and it's, very old school Japan here. I really like the place. Uh, I like the atmosphere, and like we've been in like for like 15, 20 minutes. No one seems to bother at all. So I'm um, just gonna show you guys uh, the car I'm driving right now. Yeah, what year is it? It's uh, 1985, so it's a Koki uh, with a Zenki face because I really wanted like a Zenki face. 
Um, <clears throat> back in the days when they used to do like the, the N1 race, that's the, 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 the face they, they had. So I wanted to have like this kind of like a old, cheap, um, one make race look on the car. So that's why it's just like full white, nothing else. Um, not much about the car, I mean that's the full spot welded uh, chassis. Crack suspensions, uh, that's the 4AG, the, the, the 16 valve. <laughs> With uh, the Freedom computer, you know, like cams, uh, you have the, the, the four throttle of the, um, the 20 valve, and otherwise, that's pretty much it. You know, there is a TRD close ratio gearbox with a uh, 4.8 final ratio. So, you know, it's the engine is slow, but the car is fun to drive because you know, close ratio and stuff. So, what, what wheels and tires do you have here? So yeah, the wheels, they are the new work Equip 40. I mean, you know, it's one year old now, but like that's the, the, the wheel I pushed and promoted last year for work. Uh, 15 inch. You're gonna laugh when you're gonna hear the size. That's 7.5 in the, in the front and eight on the back. So it's pretty narrow, but I really wanted to keep the, 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 the tire working. I mean, I really drive the car. Um, I wanted to get the, the best feeling uh, and the best feedback from the tires. So that's why I kept the, the, the side pretty much straight, you know. It gives you like a lot of feedback. It's not too sticky, so you can keep driving on the street. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, not much in the inside, you know. Wanted to keep it clean. I saw removed like most of the, the plastic things, the, the carpet. I got like a likewise shifter and, and defimators, but yeah, that's all. That's all you need, you know. I want another seat though. I got the car with this seat and it's pretty old and it's kind of Japanese size, so, you know, a little bit tight for my fat ass. So I want something bigger. <laughs> and Koji and all those guys are freaking awesome. I see them every January, but um, because of COVID, I won't be able to see them this January, so <laughs> sucky. But these are the Workmeister M1s. 19 by, oh God, 19 by 14, negative something. And you know it's a negative something because you can put your head in here, you're definitely in the negatives. Uh, so it's a big boy, big boy wheel. The body kit, this is a Panda version one body kit. Now, this is the first Panda body kit in the world for the Cayman and uh, I got it way back in 2016 when it first came out. I think that's pretty much it. I mean, the front right here, you can, you can come over here and check out the front. The front setup right here, this is a Pandem version one. So if you guys have never seen a Pandem version one, this is basically covered 
And it looks very awkward. Like I told Mira-san, I'm like, Mira-san, you have to redesign that front bumper because it does not look good. And most of the Cayman guys that bought a Pandem kit said the same thing. They, they, weren't, they weren't fans at all. So what Mira did was he designed the version two Pandem kit, the front end, and it, it looks amazing. Um, a lot of the other guys rock it now. No one ever rocks the version one, but since uh, I, I, this is the first version one, you know, first version one in the world, I, I didn't want to get rid of it. So what I did was I actually modified this. We cut this happy face off and we just plastered it on the front. That's, that's what you see right here. The paint job, this is all OEM. The car itself, just OE silver. I didn't change anything. This is my OE, OE silver that I got back in 2016, 15, 2015. And uh, we, we paint match the body kit, that's it. Nothing special. Uh, I didn't repaint the whole car because, dude, if you've ever repainted a, a car, it never turns out the same. Yeah, my, my Miata here is amazing and flawless. And my painter, uh, my painter Felix is an amazing painter. How long have you been painting? I've been doing this for 15 years. 15 years? Yeah. That's crazy. How do you, you start painting? Because people are going to be wondering how, how, how to start painting. Uh, well, you know, all my brothers, they're into uh, all the body shops. So that's how I learned. Okay. Nice, dude. Now, how can uh, people find you? Uh, as of right now, I'm working at MCS Performance. So, you know, you can find me at MCS Performance. Just go through Instagram and MCS. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So, you're mainly a painter, but you can do body stuff too, right? Yes, I can do body stuff. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. But, it's never like the OEM, all right? Meaning, it's just amazing to keep an OE paint job. Plus, your, your resale value is always gonna be better because you didn't touch the car. Um, I think that's, all that I can remember. Let's see what else we got here. Well, there's a lot of internal stuff that I can't even mention, like uh, the engine work, like the IPD plenum, we got the fab speed, full exhaust, straight pipe, the headers, the, the electronics, the, the ECU, and all that stuff that you can't see that I don't wanna have to mention because there's, it just it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. You can't even see it. Um, but that's, that's pretty much it. Oh, the stuff you can see though, um, Brembo GT, uh, calipers, obviously the rotors, the big brake kit, that you can see. And um, I painted it acid green, so if you're wondering what green I'm using for these mirrors, the interior and this, it's acid green. That's a, that OE Porsche color. All right, now we gotta move out ramps so I don't destroy my front end going down this driveway. So you should be on that side. There you go, now I remember. Just line it up with the curb. There you go. Dude, I got some good ass plywood too. Dude, this plywood was like, I forgot, it's like a hundred some bucks. Damn. Yeah, dude. For all three sheets? No, per. A sheet? Yeah. Damn, I know, for plywood, right? But if you get like a cheapy plywood, they just bend. Oh, yeah. Ben and break. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to throw some of this material away. You know, Daniel Song might need it. <laughs> <laughs> Were you at his garage? He was making stuff. Uh, yeah. That's fun. Okay, so what we like got. He's like, he's like, he's like, should I do race rams or just build wood? I'm like, I don't know how long it would take to get race ramps. Yeah, everyone's back ordered. Wait, did he uh, need it for the for getting out of his driveway? For getting back in, I think. Oh yeah, dude. I told him to do the same thing right here. It's the only way to do it. Okay, now we're ready.
good, we're good, we're good. So sketchy, dude. This is why I hate towing my car. But I also can't drive it all the way to Burbank because Jay Leno's place is in Burbank. And uh, it's, uh, what do you call it? It's a bit far and the roads are a little bit challenging. Go ahead and kill the car, put it in gear, and e-brake if you have it. You can turn off the motor already, we're good. But just stay in there. All these people taking pictures of you, Dion. Oh, just, How do you survive in this neighborhood? I don't. I just don't come out. Oh, rocks. Is there room for another one there? Please. He's a normal citizen, people. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. Like, I'll, like, I didn't even go that far, and I already got a bunch of rocks. So. Ah, this isn't too hard, huh, Victor? No. It touched some of the evasive cars were harder. The diffuser sticks out so much more. Really? Yeah, the rear diffuser is where it gets tricky. Yours angles up, plus you didn't have the little fin on the side, so that helped a lot. I told you I had to take that stupid thing off. Oh, all right, now I'm going to... Your upslip angle helps. A lot of the real race cars, this is all super flat. Oh, what a <laughs> You guys need to move it? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Any issues? No. Pushing it around? Okay. Not too bad? Okay. Good. You can hear it. That's Max. Go forward. Forward. That should be good. Right. Clear. Right more, right more. It's good, straight. Meep, meep. Behind you, right behind you, behind you, behind you. Hey, guys. Rolling in, sorry to cut you off, moment of silence here. Look at this thing yeah. dripping, dripping. This is, uh, I mean, this is, you know, J JDM, wheel for real. JDM meets GDM meets EDM playing on the radio, man. This thing is all over the place. I love this thing, right? I mean, this thing's beating the beat. We're going old school. This 07 Porsche Cayman S, this is owned by Dion Mascunana, I believe. I'm sorry if I butchered your last name, but we're not butchering your car at all because this thing is just dripping style. We'll break it down here. I, I really love this car. But uh, Dion, over to you. Tell us a little more. Hey guys, Dion Mosk and I here in Fountain Valley, California. Welcome to my garage. Behind me is my 2007 Pandem Cayman S. Now, if I had to describe this car in one to two sentences, it's a bit hard, but essentially I, I took on this project as, as kind of like a DIY, build only at home, no help from shops, and I think I did good. Designed the aero package that you see here, did a lot of work on the engine by myself, swapped the whole suspension assembly. It's sad that you can't see the suspension assembly, but that was a lot of work to do by myself with no lift. And then designed the wing setup that you see back there uh, with my CAD skills, essentially with cardboard. <laughs> Not legit CAD CAD, but you know, cardboard aided design. And uh, I think I did good. Uh, when I initially got this car in 2015, it was already eight years old and um, it's hard to find an old car close to 10 years that's perfectly clean and preserved. So uh, I surfed the web uh, Saturday night. By Sunday, I already found my car, drove over there, checked it out, clean body, straight, awesome paint job, uh, OEM paint job actually. The interior is super clean, low mileage and wheels and tires weren't curbed or anything. So I'm like, all right, this is the car. Uh, and then five years later is what you see right here. Um, how would I feel if my car is immortalized as a Hot Wheel? Well, 
it would be amazing because growing up, all I did was just buy Hot Wheels, collect Hot Wheels. You know, I got the trucks, the wagons, the rat rods, the hot rods, the goofy cars that you see on TV. And I played with them all. I, you know, I'd get them from like grocery stores, stuff it in the basket. Hopefully my mom, you know, pays for it. <laughs> Take it home, unpack them, play with them. And most of the time end up stepping on them. Yeah, that hurts. But um, it would be awesome for my, my car to become one of those Hot Wheels because growing up, you know, that was kind of like my dream. I wanted to build Hot Wheels cars uh, for the road. And this is why most of my cars look crazy from my Porsche to my Mazda Miata there to the smart car that I built and then my EK. They're all outrageous cars because I always wanted to build a Hot Wheels car for the road. Ted, get up here. You're a Porsche guy. <laughs> I, I, I mean, this thing is begging to be ripped on. Yeah, th so I'm going to be super honest. When I first saw this... No, please lie to me. <laughs> <laughs> you're pretty. You're pretty. Oh, Ooh. savage. Ooh. I'm out. I'm, I'm being Jay now. Um, no, when I, when I first saw this, when I first saw this, uh, I didn't like it on the screen or on paper. But when you see it in person, to me it was a little bit too boy racer. But you see it in person and it is <laughs> insane. Like the details, are, like you're saying, are insane. If you look at the back suspension, the Moton canisters there, just super well done. The fact that the um, the hood, you can lift the trunk and the wing can still stay there. And it's a it's a custom custom wing assembly. Just the CNC, so, you still see it was milled, so right? Nice. I yeah, like totally, that. Yeah, right, totally. It's raw, it's, it's raw material. It's, it's amazing. This thing is super, super sweet. And I like the, the tonal, the tonal outside of the high vis. So silver next to kind of the gun metal, next to the gun metal there. But the high vis, I'm a sucker for that because that's racing. You know, to me, if you said to me this was a factory race car, I would have guessed, oh, this come from Porsche? I mean, it's probably the most, uh, what can I say, professional designed mm. car we've seen today in the sense that it looks like it came out of, it says Por Porsche Intelligent <laughs> Performance. It, look, it looks like it came from the factory. It looks like you, if you drove this into one of those Porsche only meets with the 917s, I think people would think this was some kind of factory race car. Yeah, the I function mean, it, the function is the yeah, fashion. Yeah. That's where you kind of like hat tip, DTM meets Pikes Peak. Meets yeah, I, I might GT. lose the white wall tire. I might lose the, yeah. the uh, that part of it doesn't quite work for me. But the rest of it, the way the flares are, I mean, each each one of these is beautifully, yep. uh, you know, beautifully done. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the fit and finish is amazing, and it does look like a, a factory race car. You know, a little it's slot slide window, window yeah. you know, these, these kind of things. The Ford GT has this. You can barely get like a, <laughs> a Wendy single patty. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's going to ask hey, you. Uh, oh, why, dude, again, that's your stick. You well, got to own it, man. Well, hand you me some it. of my fries. <laughs> yeah. But it uh, does. It looks like it, looks like it came... <laughs> Somebody flew it from Germany and dropped it off here. But also, it went through Japan because it's got work meisters on the corners. That's oh, a that's proper true. JDM wheel you'd love on your Z, right? I'm, I'm drooling right now. These wheels are so clean. I didn't even notice the white wall tires because the wheels are so clean. I've been staring at them the entire time. But the, another thing that I really like on this car is kind of like, I guess, the livery, how subtle it is. But... Oh, you know what? What is it? What does it say? Does anybody, can anybody see? It do, it's words. It has a word I think on it, it right? says Porsche Intelligence Performance. Actually, that's, that's a great point. We didn't even yeah. talk about the livery kind of subtlety <laughs> of that. It says something. What does it, what, what does it, it mean? Great. Is this like National Treasure? I feel like, I feel like Nick Cage. Like, what does it mean? Oh, <laughs> Nip, can you dissect that? What's it say? Uh, Gran Turismo. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> all right, you're still working on that rap. I get it. It's all good. It's all good, Blair. Cohesive. cohesive. It says cohesive. Cohesive. Uh, I, I mean, I, I really like this. The steering wheel. We're talking about the steering wheel, Snoop. If you want to go through here, I know you're a fan of touching the steering wheel. I gotta wheels. touch. This thing. This thing actually flips up. We'll. Uh, uh, I can't do it from here, but yeah, get, My get up in there. My longer than yours. Let me. Yeah. Get it. There you go. But it actually flips up, real racy. You could see, you know, the shifter inside. This has that racing feel to. Oh, don't push that one. No, I'm Whoa. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you know Ejecto that, seat. Just a motherfucker to push it through. Hey, <laughs> hey, 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 yeah. So as uh, as we are, hey, we I'll are bouncing. Yeah, that, uh, yeah, yeah, he's still trying to find something to rhyme with cohesive. Right. This, this car uh, yelled at me right when it came out. I, I feel like it just jumped out of a video game. Okay. I want to pick this car. I want to drive this car. Right. You know. says, Gran, says Gran Turismo. I even like the, you know, he says red, white, and blue oh, on the, the Porsche, went, went up on the like Stuttgart, that? on the Stu yeah, so that's, that's what I was saying. Tight. Yeah, that's, that's racy. Do you drive like that? No, gosh, no, <laughs> gosh, no. Like, <laughs> you know, the, usually the, the Porsche badge there, Jay, you know, German colors, not case here. He did a little red, white, and yeah. blue. Yeah. I like it. That shit right. real hot wheelish. All right, 
Our last car. Yeah, you could definitely fit burger patties through that little window, Jay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right time. Aside, that's practical. A fry at a time. That back end looks nice, too. Our last. We're just doing a photo shoot now, and um, they're trying to figure out how to fit all these cars here. There's like six, seven cars. Then Riley over here is the winner. Freaking awesome. Awesome Trans Am build. He built that by himself. So. Uh, we're trying to figure this out. My car's got a good spot though, so I'm happy with that. from Jay's and it was interesting it was interesting a lot of people um, kind of complained who won and uh, other builders thought that X other builders should win but to be honest the the winner of the contest is is an amazing dude Riley Riley dude when he arrived for the freaking competition he literally has the most slammed Trans Am that you'll ever freaking see. He's literally two inches from the ground and dude. Slammed. This thing's so freaking cool. Ho ho ho. So freaking cool. Wow. Slammed. And we literally moved this car block per block with a piece of wood, pushed it, moved back, pushed it, moved back, pushed it, moved back, uh, because his car is super slammed, super slammed. I was lucky enough that my car is not that slammed and I just drove it in. So um, I helped them do that. And then after we stayed super late because he was cleaning his car. So we just literally just talked about his car and what he did with the car and, and the build and whatnot. And dude, the guy is a crazy builder. I think he's like in his late 20s or if, if not mid 20s. And he freaking built the whole car by himself. The, the chassis, the, the suspension geometry, and uh, all the fab work, all the bead rolling and everything like that. The outside fenders are all metal and, and he tracks the car, dude. This guy is crazy. So when, uh, when, when Jay and all those guys revealed that he was the winner, I was, I was rooting for the guy because, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a great builder. Like I, I build my cars with crazy details, but I didn't build my chassis. You know what I'm saying? I didn't bead roll all the stuff, you know, like the stuff that I do is so elementary compared to what Riley did that I was just, I was rooting for him. When they said that he was the winner, I was just like, it was awesome because at least it went to a guy who actually really, really, really loves his craft. And he's a genuinely like nice dude. He's like the nicest guy. When he won, I was watching him on, on the Zoom live stream. He didn't even smile. 
This guy's crazy. They were like, and the winner of the 2020 Hot Wheels Legends Tour is Riley with the Trans Am. He was just like, I was like, what the heck? I would be jumping off the walls right now. But he's a nice guy and he's, he's super humble and I'm happy he won. So with that said, what did, what did Snoop, Fluffy, the Hot Wheels judges and Jay say about my car? It was, it was pretty much, it felt better than winning for me because Jay, Jay literally talked about this car in length uh, versus all the other, you know, all the other builds, which is pretty cool because, you know, I, I, I love Jay Leno. I've, I've followed him since I was a kid. He's funny. And he, you know, I watch his shows like late night show with Jay Leno and for him to talk about my car as if it was an OE race car straight from Germany is insane is insane because the guy has massive credibility and and he said that it's super clean it's spotless it's the most professionally designed car that we've seen today that's why he says i would have guessed oh this come from porsche i mean it's probably the most uh, what can i say professional designed mm. car we've seen today in the sense that it looks like it came out of what says porsche intelligent <laughs> performance it looks it looks like it came from the factory. It looks like you, if you drove this into one of those Porsche only meets with the 917s, I think people would think this was some kind of factory race car. Um, and then, you know, Snoop is talking about it too. He reached out and like touched my steering wheel and, and Fluffy and them talk about trying to put a wop, uh, a, a wop, whopper? Was it a whopper or was it, was it a, a, a chicken shot? I forgot what it was. It was a joke about going up to a drive through because my windows don't freaking roll down. I got a little jail window, so. It was, dude, it was so awesome. The, the experience itself was worth the trip. And I ain't even mad about not winning because of what Jay Leno said. It was just amazing. So um, awesome experience. When my Miata's done, that will be competing for next year's Hot Wheels Legends Tour. And hopefully it's in person, not virtual, because it's a little bit, you know, it's a little bit tricky to do virtual stuff. Uh, connections dodgy on zoom calls or you can't be there to handle your car that was the trickiest part because when we dropped off the car we couldn't drive the car they they had to handle it they had to push it we had to I had to tell them all sorts of things like don't push on the kit don't push on the wing because it's not a shopping car you could push on on the quarter panels or here or in the front headlights or whatnot and it was crazy like don't wipe down my my windows because they scratch easy because they're polycarbonate like we talked about earlier but it was a good experience. Now, I'm gonna cover this thing up and we're gonna go hit the Miata hard because we still need to drop the freaking subframe. And it's already the weekend. Right now is Sunday and tomorrow we get back to work work. 